As you may know, HP has the broadest SDN product portfolio on the market today. This includes OpenFlow enabled switches, an SDN controller, and SDN applications. The purpose of this video is to show you what the SDN controller looks like and how the controller can integrate with HP's management tool, also known as IMC. So here we've got a diagram that shows the SDN architecture broken into three distinct layers. At the bottom layer, also known as the infrastructure layer, this is where we see the OpenFlow enabled switches. And you can tell by the numbers that HP has the most OpenFlow enabled switches in the market today. At the middle tier, we see the SDN controller, also known as the Virtual Application Networks SDN controller. And at the top, this is where the SDN applications reside. HP has created some applications that run on the SDN controller, but have also opened up the controller's API so anyone can develop a custom application to solve any individual business requirement. So now let's head over to the controller interface and take a look at that. All right, so let's get logged in. Okay, so when you first log into the HP SDN controller, you land on the general alerts page. And this is where you can get some informational messages around what's going on in the controller. So we see here, uh, based on the informational messages, that uh, we see some links being added to, to the environment and some links that are re being removed. And what you can do, um, if you like, is highlight and acknowledge uh, messages so that you can kind of keep track of what's going on within the environment. Below that, we can take a look at the applications that are currently installed on the controller. And what we have here is we've got the six applications that come by default with the SDN controller from HP. And really the purpose of these applications are to provide that layer two connectivity within the environment. So we can see uh, by looking at the state that these applications are active. Um, if we wanted to stop an application or uninstall an application, we would do that from within here. And if we wanted to install a new application, this is also where we go to install a new application. Below that, we've got the configuration area, which gives us uh, the ability to go through and perform some more granular configuration on some of the um, applications that are installed. So we've got a default value, and then we've got a value that we can modify. And so to modify the values, um, highlight the particular component, come up to modify, and then we could modify them as we see fit within our environment. Um, audit logs and support logs, relatively self-explanatory. Um, below this line is, is now where we actually start to look at uh, the devices within the environment and, and really where the control, you know, the things the controller are controlling. Um, so under the OpenFlow monitor area, we see a list of devices that are actually being monitored by this controller. And we see the data path ID, which is uh, what's used to forward traffic through the environment. We've got the IP addresses of the devices that we are managing. And then we also list the OpenFlow negotiated version. And one thing to note about this is we are both managing 1.0 and 1.3 devices with this controller. So at any given time, the controller can manage multiple versions of OpenFlow, which is uh, something that could come in handy. Um, so if we take a look um, and, and get a little bit more detail, uh, we can get a quick summary of the device. We can see what ports are actually being managed by the controller on the switch. So we've got ports 12 through 24 that we're currently managing and what the current state is of those uh, individual ports. Um, we can also, I'm going to come back here and show some flows. So we can also take a look at flows that are on the device. and. Um, I showed this particular flow um, table because this is uh, a series of flows that have been dynamically created by the layer two applications that I was showing you before. So then if we come down here and take a look at the topology area, we can actually get a dynamic view uh, of the OpenFlow or SDN environment. And so if you remember, we had the four devices that uh, are currently being managed by this controller. And, we see those devices listed here. 
and you can move uh, the devices around um, and, and have the topology change. And if you want to get, make it a little bit more static, you can pin them and, and they will stay in place a little bit better. We can take a look at the IP addresses on the end nodes or take a look at the, the MAC address as well. Um, we can look at the ports that are actually uh, the devices are plugged into in the interconnect interconnecting ports. We can get some more detail here on the flows that are happening on the individual devices. So, um, you know, by highlighting the switches, we can see the flow tables are, are changing. I'm going to change this back. Um, another nice thing that we can do, which is which is kind of handy, especially as you start getting into more complicated deployments, is we can highlight devices and find out what path is being taken through the environment. So just by highlighting the source and destination device, we can see that we're here's the, the path that's currently being followed. Um, if we want to change um, the path, we can. And it will change the path as well. So that's kind of handy to, to quickly see what's going on. If we want to get a little bit more information about the devices, we can come over here to the Follow Flow drop-down, and we can actually get some more information about the source device and the destination device, um, and the switch flow information uh, on the switches that that traffic is going through. So, lots of information in a in a small area. Um, the last thing that we've got in the controller is an area to uh, provide trace routes or essentially a, a packet trace. So by hitting play we can actually get a recording of what packets are running through the environment um, at that particular time and you know by default this is set to 10 seconds you can you know you can imagine that that could get um, you know to be a lot of data really quickly but it is uh, something that can be configured uh, under the configuration area you can uh, modify how long this recording lasts. So that, in, in a nutshell, is, is what you see in the, uh, on the controller itself. Uh, there's a lot of extras that obviously can be added by add-on applications as, as you do more on, uh, on the application side. But now what I thought would, would be interesting is to head over to the uh, management environment. And the reason management might be uh, of interest is the STN controller is great for managing you know, a series of switches or a uh, environment. But what if you have multiple um, SDN controllers? How would you actually aggregate that up and, and manage all of those from one uh, one view? And that's where uh, the IMC tool comes into comes into play. So let's head over there and take a look at uh, what this looks like inside of the management tool. So let's get logged in. I'm hoping that most of you have seen the IMC management tool a little bit, uh, but when we first log in, we get the ability to see a bunch of uh, information that's very uh, customizable uh, to, to what may be important to us. Uh, what I wanted to show here is that you know, we do have the ability to put some SDN information right in the landing page so you can actually see what's going on within the SDN environment. Uh, but if we head over specifically to the SDN manager, which is where we actually would manage uh, multiple SDN controllers. So when we get over here, we can actually get some further detail on what's going on, uh, how many controllers we have, switches, what's the um, status of the switches. And, and if you can tell, each one of these is a hyper, hyperlink. I'm not going to actually click on these because it, it may get a little bit confusing. But you can click on these if you want and get some more specific information about what's going on. Um, we see the flow information uh, that's listed down here, the flow tables. And if we take a look at the topology, we can also get a topology view of what's going on in the SDN environment from IMC. So what we can see here, and, and we've got some drop downs here at the top, um, we can actually identify uh, which one of the devices are OpenFlow only devices, I mean that's all they're doing. And in this particular environment, we don't have any. Um, we've got some hybrid devices, so these are the 
switches that, that we talked about, um, and they have uh, OpenFlow enabled on them. They also have uh, some standard forwarding that's, that's taking place as well. And then we can also see the devices that are you know not OpenFlow enabled as well. And these are some of the hosts that, uh, if you remember, were connected to, to the switches. Um, if we've got multiple switches in the env in the environment, we can select which switch we want to take a look at, and it'll um, show us specifically the information on that particular switch, or we can uh, take a look at everything um, all at once. So if we take a look at the logical topology, you know this should look a little bit familiar. So one of the nice things here is is that logical view that we had on the controller, we've got that within the management tool as well. So you know what you were doing on the physical controller to be able to identify um, you know end nodes or end devices, we're again able to do that within IMC. So you know the flexibility to be able to manage a multi-controller environment with one interface, one pane of glass um, is really handy with with IMC. So we can identify the controller, um, and if you had multiple controllers, you could select them in the dropdown. In this case, we can actually see the uh, how which controller is is managing which uh, which switches. We can also from this interface, we can highlight two devices just like we did before, and do a right click on it, and we can actually see what the shortest path is through the environment. So you can actually then also see from IMC um, the shortest path through the environment, which is kind of handy, um, handy as well. So if we take a look at the resource area, we can we can see um, the individual controller. Um, we can see the number of instances, and we can see the synchronization results. So if I take a look at the instances, um, this is our four switches that we're managing with the the SDN controller. So you can see the number of ports um, that are being managed by by each one of the switches. You know, we can just like we were able to to look at this ex, uh, on the controller. You can look at it, the in, port information from IMC. We can also take a look at the OpenFlow entries, um, or the, I'm sorry, the OpenFlow table. And from here, we can actually, if you needed to statically add an entry, we could come in here and and actually go through and add a static OpenFlow entry. So if you wanted to make a rule yourself you know where you based on an input port you wanted to perform some action um, we could actually go through and and do that here as well so you can go through and uh, create your own static flow from from with from IMC and push it out to the uh, open flow devices um, so if we come back over here I apologize for the extra click uh, the other thing that we can do is we can also you get some more information about the clients that are connected up, uh, what ports they are on, um, and you know connected to each of the switches as well. So we've also got a monitor area um, where we can actually take a look at you know what what alarms are happening within the environment um, and and go through and acknowledge them from here, get some more information. Uh, from them here as well. We can perform network virtualization from here as well. I don't have any of that configured right now. And then um, set up the configuration to, uh, you know, the parameters to connect to the individual controllers. So that's that's it. But the value here is, you know, really the ability to, to aggregate multiple, you know, an environment with multiple controllers in one management tool. So now you've got a single pane of glass in inside your, your SDN enabled environment. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to head over to um, the switch, one of the switches, and just run through the configuration that's on the switch so you can see how easy it is to uh, configure a switch for OpenFlow and SDN. Okay, so let's get logged in here. And we have a um, HP 3800 switch running OpenFlow. And I'm going to highlight the OpenFlow configuration. And this is it. So to enable OpenFlow on a switch, you identify 
um, within the configuration and inside the OpenFlow area, you identify a controller, the IP address of the controller, and, and how you actually connect to the controller, what VLAN. And below that, um, you identify an OpenFlow instance. And this instant, instance, I'm sorry, um, identifies what port, uh, what VLAN on the switch you're actually going to manage with, with the controller. Uh, which controller ID you want to want to use uh, for this particular instance, and what what your action is in case you you lose connectivity between the switch and the controller, and then you enable it. and And because you've got instances, you can have multiple instances on on the switch managing multiple VLANs. Um, enable this, and you're up and running. So, how does this look? If we just take a look at the status. We see that we're um, enabled. Instance OF1, which you can see up here, is up and operational, and uh, we are running OpenFlow version 1.0, and we have 12 flows currently on this switch. So that's what I wanted to show you. I hope you found it informational and helpful, and uh, I hope you have a better understanding of what the HPS Dan controller looks like, and, and maybe how you might be able to integrate this into your environment. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.